Thank you. I think this brings us on to the question of providing the right incentives. And I think that there was some consensus by the group that to retain a quality researcher, it was important for think tanks to nurture them. And uh, they could do so by providing the right incentives for you know, their researchers. And it was agreed that having the right incentives in place can motivate researchers to perform at a high level. But it was also important for think tanks to know that different people respond to different sets of incentives. And it was important for them to provide a range of incentives, you know, and not just focus on, you know, single incentives. And we identified two broad types of incentives, the monetary incentives and the non-monetary incentives. And I'll just uh, give a few examples of, you know, the monetary incentives that you know, the group identified and then open up the discussion. Also give a few examples of non-monetary incentives that could actually motivate staff to perform at a high level and also lead to retaining more quality staff. And for the monetary incentives, I think we identified an attractive salary package. Also, we identified, you know, salary increases or bonuses these were tied to performance evaluations and so on. And we also identified direct financial incentives for a particular output so that if, for, for instance, a staff member you know, participated in or maybe prepared a proposal that was um, successful, he or she could be provided with some incentive, financial incentive. Or if a staff member you know, got an article published in a peer review journal, he or she could be provided with some financial in incentive. With the non-monetary incentives, I think that, you know, we listed a number of uh, in, in some, some ideas, and I think one of them was public exposure, having, you know, researchers, or providing a platform for researchers to you know, present their findings. It gives them, it improves the standing of the researcher in the eyes of the public. And also giving them the opportunity to, you know, have discussions in, with media discussions and interact with the media. So they could participate in TV debates, radio debates, and we felt that these were all forms of incentives that could, you know, retain, you know, staff. And in addition to that, I think we, um, We also um, identified publishing. If a researcher comes out with a very good paper, that paper could be published under his or her name and disseminated. And we felt that that is, could also be an incentive to attract, sorry, to retain a staff member. And I think that, um, I think basically th those were if some of the issues that we identified. But I think that I would like to open up the discussion with posing the question how your organizations have used financial incentives to motivate researchers and how these incentives have been structured and whether they worked. I don't know whether apart from the listed incentives, financial incentives, other organizations have financial incentives, how they've structured these incentives and whether or not they have motivated staff and have help retain, help to retain staff. Any ideas? Uh, yes, uh, you have mentioned already, you know, apart from the salary, the other types of incentives, you know, I think that is very important, performance-based incentives. Um, it is also important that you have some institutional you know, uh, um, initiatives like, you know, for example, at our institute, everyone one time in a year has free medical checkup. So this is one. Second is that gradually, in the beginning, we didn't have the funds, but now we have a, we have dedicated funds for the pension and gratuity uh, for the, uh, for the staff. I think that is also one thing that, because, uh, because it, these funds have some rules. For example, you have to be three years in order to be eligible, you know? So those type of things. So th this is also very important that if you have those type of institutional 
um, setups, it, 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 it helps with retention. Yeah, yeah, in order to be eligible for, for the pension scheme, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, uh, this uh, other service benefit apartment salary, as he was mentioning, is very important, you know. At IRDS also, we introduced the gratuity, you know, gratuity policy, which is, you know, the employee becomes eligible to take it after three years of service. And at the same time, we provided medical facilities also. Uh, so medical insurance is also here, there, we, pro we are providing. And uh, with Provident Fund, Provident Fund is there, uh, it's, it's a statutory because uh, there's a government of India rule that even if, if someone is working with you for one year, one day, you have to uh, uh, deduct his uh, Provident Fund at, uh, contribution, I think that's there. And, uh, but uh, with, uh, apart from these, you know, if you are giving some, um, I think, you know, uh, some financial incentive for, say, uh, say for some good works, uh, that may create, that's my hunch, that may create some kind of, you know, uh, problem for the uh, leader in the organization also because, you know, uh, there is a problem that, you know, because if you are, a, uh, you know, with a small organization, people may think that, you know, how he or she has been become, uh, given additional uh, money for uh, some work, I am also eligible. So that's a difficult zone to uh, manage, I think. So the, here comes the role of non-financial uh, incentives. You know, you are promoting them so that, you know, we promote them to go to the seminars, workshops, present their papers, and uh, give them due right, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, co-authorship in the projects. That we are able to do that. So, but giving uh, uh, work, uh, financial incentive for the better work. It's, a, it's a, again, sometime on a long term, it, become, it, can, it can become the kind, kind of you know, personal judgment. So uh, that we, we are trying to avoid for the time being. I think what, uh, uh, the other thing that uh, uh, incentivizes researchers is to have good mentors if they're young researchers whom they look on to as, you know, people they just uh, identify themselves with. Any other ideas or any? Yeah, I suppose I was just going to um, put a question out there, um, thinking about monetary incentives. And I suppose I understand there might be a tension or there, there might be a few different models. You could have a situation where you're paying your researchers a, a higher base salary, but then the expectation is the researchers will work purely for uh, the think tank that they're working for and then there's no opportunities for, for moonlighting and if there are they have to maybe take the organization's name um, and then on the other hand you might have the situation where um, I know and I know of two different think tanks I've got in mind um, and they both work so different models but they both work um, but where they pay a lower salary and they allow their staff members to, to do the moonlighting, the consultancies, and to take on projects um, outside the think tank. So I'm just wondering what sort of experiences there are um, around the room with that. Yeah, uh, yeah okay. Uh, I think we also use a, a bonus, especially on a, in, a, in a income made from commercial work. We get a percentage and share using a formula. Uh, across all the staff, including Everest. I think there's uh, many institutions that make a mistake to reward only researchers and forget the support staff who have also done, uh, who have contributed, and it creates a very, a very negative uh, uh, environment. Uh, but it's also very careful, like, uh, if you get used to paying a financial reward for doing a specific work, very soon it gets to a situation where nobody will do anything until they, they get the money. So you end up with a very kind of a, kind of a kiosk where you see everybody wants to, to get a, a financial commitment before they do anything. So we've, uh, we've really struggled to, uh, to resist uh, that kind of uh, uh, work. Uh, and also, like, uh, I think the researchers put the pressure to say, I wrote the proposal uh, and I did the bulk of the work, so I shouldn't get a percentage of the money before anything else goes to the organization. That again is, uh, can lead to, to a problem. And I think it's better where you say you have a, a good performance appraisal system, and everybody gets 
the promotion and the bonus are based on a very clear measurement of performance, uh, which is holistic, not just uh, proposals or attracting money, even the core work programs. Come again? Yes, it's, uh, <laughs> we, we just use a formula. Uh, the variables in the formula is uh, uh, your, your, your salary, which is a, is a measure of your seniority. And then uh, if you are new to such, if you didn't uh, work for the whole year, we do a, a fraction out of 12. And then uh, your score in the performance appraisal. So if you do those three variables and you have the total amount of money available for sharing, then you know who gets how much. Yeah. And maybe we could talk about the non monetary incentives as well because time is running. Other Just to add complication because time is already run out. Um, we are, at some point during the 90s, we understood that the only way to be sustainable is to be project based. So no single researcher at IEP will earn a salary unless it is backed by a project. So this set of financial incentives is like everybody manages his, her own budget and pay the people at the salary that they decide. So there is not like a central, like other organizations that they have, you know, the schedule and, the, and that meant survival for us. Uh, thank you. Uh, at, uh, go ahead. So what we've done is to really encourage all researchers to do presentations at international conferences, including young researchers. And we also celebrate success together. Whenever you organize a workshop and it has been very successful, we try to celebrate that success together. Yes, we just asked you to beg your indulgence just for a few minutes. The queue at the lunch is long right now. So, <laughs> so this will just give us a few minutes. Um, I just want to mention also, Jean, at IEA, we have an employee of the month scheme as well. So thank you for all your inputs. Uh, this is more of a summing up session, but I know it's a very testing because I'm eating up your lunch time. So, but we have to sum up. So, uh, so just to start uh, from the top, basically what I've done is that I have divided today's uh, session, very valuable session, into observations. Some, some were just comments which were made, and other were more of recommendations or strategies that could be replicated or used uh, in that respect. So for each of the headings, I'll go over the observations really quickly, followed by a recommendation for that session. So we started off with who is a quality researcher, and uh, we said that yes, qualifications, publications, uh, communication skills are important. Uh, but the answer may differ across uh, the think tanks. Uh, there has to be an ability to connect uh, research with policy, which is a good sign of a quality researcher. They need to be passionate about their own thematic area, uh, which will help them gain respect. Uh, there has to be an ability to think in multidisciplinary context. Uh, must observe good research ethics, uh, ability to deal with alternate views, uh, should, should be a good mentor and manager of HR uh, and must, have, uh, must be easy with multitasking uh, over uh, the short to medium term and should pay attention to detail. 
Now, with this, we landed into the next question uh, of how do we attract quality researchers in our organizations? And there were observations about that, yes, there is high demand for quality researchers, and there's a lot of competition between employers as well, particularly in the case of developing countries. Uh, advertisements are usually not rendering good candidates. Uh, gender balance needs to be observed. Uh, one needs to allow young researchers to move on and show them a future path and growth trajectory. Uh, you need to help them in getting published. Uh, and maybe it's not just about pay, it could be about package in which you have some sort of benefits such as publications and platform for publicity. Uh, and uh, there's a need uh, to focus on the supply side as well uh, for sustaining the future uh, uh, growth of the field and ensuring supply of researchers. Now the recommendations that we received uh, under this question, i.e. how do we attract quality researchers, uh, the, res the recommendations included uh, the need for longer term uh, contracts, uh, bridging the gap between the current salary that think tanks pay and what the market is paying. Uh, training them and allowing them space to carry on their own research agenda in some form. Uh, if TTI has a branding strategy, it will be easier for them to catch uh, passionate researchers who would like to have th that TTI branding on their CV. Uh, TTIs need to approach the universities and give seminars over there. Um, one needs to get in touch with the diaspora uh, and perhaps attract uh, those kids for internship programs, uh, allowing visiting researcher programs, and headhunting should be made a constant feature in the HR strategy of a, t of a TTI think tank. Uh, one also needs to liaise with the supervisors in universities, which will help them uh, which will help the TTIs in uh, uh, basically bypassing the moral hazard and testing with the, uh, with the candidates gone bad. Uh, this will also help in getting not just researchers, but passionate researchers, those which have been tried by university supervisors. And the unsolicited applications that come through our websites uh, can be valuable at them sometimes and should be given uh, due attention. This led us to our third question. Uh, that once we have identified the researchers, we have attracted them, how do you retain them? How do you nurture them in the medium to longer term now? Uh, the observations, of course, included that it is uh, easy to retain for the older TTIs because they're a good brand name, look good on the CV. Uh, but the recommendations were fairly broad-based. Uh, one could bring the young researchers at, as interns and let them dream about their career and passion uh, of pursuing interesting research questions. Uh, perhaps facilitate them in going for their PhD programs or higher studies. Uh, and one way to do this is to provide them uh, joint publications, uh, which will somehow distinguish them from other researchers. Uh, and help them get, getting shortlisted. Make them understand that working for think tank is uh, relatively more prestigious because it links you with policy makers in some respect. How organization culture can attract staff? How could this culture motivate existing staff? Uh, can there be a shared belief, uh, belief system, values, lessons learned, and assumptions uh, that lead into the organizational working, current and future? Uh, and the recommendations uh, were again very broad based and these included uh, the need to have a performance measure in place so that productivity can be appreciated, uh, making young researchers part of important organization decisions so that ownership, a long term ownership can be created. Uh, need to cut through the red tape in your organizations and have a relatively flatter structure. Uh, uh, and, and then some tactical uh, uh, recommendations such as encouraging uh, young researchers to make presentations in brown bag seminars, promoting uh, uh, democracy with transparency in your organization, uh, and, and, uh, and further micro down actually, uh, uh, promoting interaction between 
the lower, mid, and uh, upper career researchers through um, uh, lunches, daily lunches, uh, monthly research group meetings, family retreats, so on and so forth. Uh, the second was about leadership, which perhaps was, uh, I found it to be uh, uh, one of the more uh, challenging ones. Uh, I think in case of observations, we were asking for a man uh, who's really found in practice, of course, but one needs to uh, groom such people. So the observation was that the leadership, that the leader of TTI should have the capacity to listen, mentor, help drive consensus, enhance people's capabilities, need for multidisciplinarity, encourage people to talk across the board, uh, should provide uh, authority with firmness, uh, has his own field and should be respected in his own field, should have managerial capability, ability to motivate teams and individuals, establish regular dialogue, um, uh, resolve conflict, uh, conflicts, uh, flexibility to uh, circumstances, encourage feedback, remain firm, and should be able to take tough decisions, uh, and should provide us with a big picture. So, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I will leave... <laughs> I will leave the recommend. I will leave the recommendation column blank in this case. <laughs> uh, the last aspect was about uh, incentives. Uh, observations were given about monetary as well as non-monetary incentives. So, monetary incentives in case of strategies, we were shared by uh, a lot of you. Uh, we're uh, providing of bonuses, uh, incentives for proposal development incentives for publishing papers in peer-reviewed journals uh, are a good way to keep up the motivation. Uh, others, uh, other, other practices which were shared include a medical checkup, pensions, gratuity, uh, placing young researchers under good mentors, and then uh, the pursuit or placing in, uh, or putting in place non-monetary uh, incentives such as giving young researchers public expo exposure, uh, uh, policy papers, and co-authoring. Uh, if I have left anything out, uh, I would request Peter to allow us maybe one or two minutes, and in, in case I've left anything out, uh, you could get back to me because I have to put it in writing, so it will really help us to facilitate. Just to, uh, because I was sitting quiet and I did not share STPI's experience, so just in 20 seconds, uh, one of the good things that we have done is to put in place a succession plan. So you cannot have any of the executive directors or deputy executive directors or assistant executive directors to serve more than five years. You have to leave the organization. Now this puts so much pressure on the executive director to groom the team really quickly, you know. You have to have the middle tier take, o take over your task within the next five years, you know. And we have done the same thing with our board, actually. Uh, we have established MOUs with the, with the best universities in the country. So while we know that once these graduates, uh, once these students graduate from the universities, it'll be hard for us to catch them. But what we do is that we offer these universities summer internship programs. So we tell them that send us your best students for summer internships and we'll pick out the top three, you know. And this is what has helped us in branding our own uh, uh, organization for the past 20 years. We have allowed for the university academics Monday seminars. Every Monday for the past 20 years, we have run a seminar for university academics where they can come to our uh, think tank and actually f uh, flag their university or academic research what they are doing. And then it becomes our job as policy researchers to see can we put this academic research into practice. Uh, we have allowed for a bit of policy entrepreneurship within the organization. So as soon as a researcher, no matter what ladder he is at in the organization, as soon as a researcher wins his own small competitive grant, we allow him to go independent. While his base salary is insured, he can now go independent, work on his own project, uh, and his uh, feedback on time is, is, is basically relaxed. From this year, we have started funding PhDs out of our own endowment fund. So these are, in order to actually ensure that once these PhDs 
uh, have, have secured their degrees, they don't run away. We have put in place split PhD programs under MOU with Swiss universities, under MOU with the, with the German university. So you will do your coursework in Europe and you will come back to SDPI to do your thesis, basically. Uh, and finally, uh, we had put in place a project incentive of 5%, which has really worked very well. So anyone who wins the project gets to keep 5% as a proposal development incentive, and this has really worked uh, in, in, in getting uh, uh, some ownership of it uh, and helping our researchers to remain away from uh, the standard consulting world, you know. So thank you very much.